Welcome to another session from LearnReason.com. My name is Matt, and in this session, we're going to go over making a killer drum set sound, you know, and we're going to be using the Kong drum designer. And what I want to use is the low pass filter and the high pass filter right here in the EQ section of the virtual SSL mixer. And, uh, you know, we, we've been, we just covered the EQ, so I'm going to do some videos using the EQ and show you how it works, you know, how, how some ways you can use it because EQing is such an integral part to getting a good mix, you know, to toning your sounds, getting your sounds the way you want and getting them to work within your song. And I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos on that because EQing is such a, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to grasp when you think about all the things you need to learn when it comes to mixing. EQing is a, it's an extremely awesome art to learn because that's what it is, it's art. So I have a, a Kong drum sound here. Um, this is the Len drum from the Jiggery Pokery uh, Kings of Kong refill. And I, I really like that refill. There's a little plug for you, jiggery pokery. Okay, so I, I made up a nice drum beat here. I like it. And this is what we have to start with. Yeah, I like that drum beat. It's, it's, it's working for me. But what I want to do now is I want to hone it in. I want to sculpt the sound and, you know, and... Make it my own, if you will. So what you can do here with the Kong is you have, you have 14 separate outputs here, they can, or, or uh, seven uh, stereo, or actually eight. But these 14, you can, you can send them out to separate mix channels very easily. So what we're gonna do is we're, just, we're gonna make this one smaller, we're gonna mute it. We'll be able to come back to this later. I have another one right here, and this is the one we'll, we will uh, uh, work on so we can A and B the difference. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get myself a couple mixed channels here, and I'm just going to route them in. I'm going to hold shift. I want three of them. I hold shift and then drop it in there. I want three mixed channels. That's all I want. Oops. And I want to route them to the you know, separate out, so I have, like, the kick. We'll name this the kick. Um, we'll name this one the, the snare. And we'll name this one the hi-hat. That's all, just three instruments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route three out to the left mono. And I'm just going to unhook that. Bring that one down to the the snare, so three and four go to the kick and the snare, and then five will go to the, the hi-hat. And uh, I can just get rid of the, that. So I just have three. So I'm gonna tab around here. I'm gonna open up Show Drum FX, and you'll see right here, I'm gonna click on this, the pad, and then I'm gonna go right down here to Drum Output, and I wanna assign that to bus three, and I'm gonna pan it to the left. That makes it a mono signal, sorry. Then I'm gonna go to my snare, and I'm gonna assign that to three and four, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pan that one way right. And then my uh, hi-hats. I'm gonna pan those, uh, those are in five, so I'm going to pan that uh, left. So now, if we go to the sequencer, and we can get rid of that, what I'll do is just drag this down here, and then we can make this smaller here. It's just a loop, and we're going we're gonna to mute that one. So now we have it. You can see we got our kick here, our snare, 
and our hi-hat. And now we have, you know, full control over the sounds with, you know, using the mixer, which is the way to go. And the first thing I, I see here is look at the levels. Right off the bat, I can see my, um, you know, I've got a pretty, it's, it's bouncing up above 10. Eh, the hi-hats are, 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 are uh, or snare is, is bouncing up a bit. So right off the bat, I'm going to get a little control of the sound here. We'll, we'll bring this down here so we can see what's going on. I'm going to turn on my compressor because I like to mix into the compressor. I'm going to bring it down just so that needle's just, just barely bouncing. A well, fast release. See, needle's just barely bouncing. And I'm going to listen. It's a little louder, so I'll just bring this down a bit. Yeah, it's transparent. The bus compressor's transparent now. And I just, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not bad. So we'll just bring this volume down. So we're just bouncing right around minus six. And we'll start mixing this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get up here. I'm going to I'm going to put a, a, a limiter on the kick. So once you push press in the peak here, this 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 makes the compressor now a limiter. And I'm just just want to control that kick so it's not bouncing up to zero or you know kind of a little more controlled. And I can see how much of gain reduction I'm getting here. Just maybe one or two dB, not too much. I don't want to affect the sound, I just want to control it a bit. And I'll do the same thing for the snare. You know, you put the fast on because it's a very fast hit. See, I'm just looking at these, these right here, and then uh, I know if I'm about... Maybe right around 10. I like to mix, you know, set my gain structure right around 10. It's just barely, you can see it's just barely getting it. Okay, so we have a decent sound. Uh, okay, so we have a decent gain structure here. We're, we're, we're getting in control here. Our, our levels are staying nice. And uh, I'm going to get my uh, snare a little off to the left. And my hi-hat's a little off to the, the right. Okay, now I want to dial in my sound. And so I'm going to go up to the EQ. And the kick. You can see right here, the kick's got a lot. See this right here? This is where the, um, you can hear the pedal hitting the, the, the kick, that, that pedal sound. I want to take some of that out. It doesn't have such a snap to it. A little more, it's a, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. So I just used the low pass to cut out a little of that, that the snapness, snappiness of the, the pedal, you know, sound. Okay, so then I can just go right here to the snare. So I just used a, you know, a low pass filter on the kick. Now what I'm going to use is what we call a band pass filter. When you have both of the low pass and the high pass filters active and you have this frequency band showing, this is called a band pass filter. So it's within the band you is the only sound you're going to hear. So We'll pump this up maybe yeah, maybe uh, take a, I'm trying to take a little of the lows out of that snare so make it a little more snappy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. So 
So now let's um let's look at the um the hi hat. See, we have some lows here. There's no reason to have the the hi hats with this frequency here if you know that that that's your kick. So I'm going to turn the high pass. Ah, eh, I kind of like that. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the EQ and just try and cut out a little bit of uh, this. It's, it's so, you can see it's right around in this frequency, you know, in the five, the five kilohertz, maybe four. And so I'm going to turn on the E mode, which gives me a little more. I'm going to tighten up the Q. You can see it right here. And then... Just gonna bring it down just a smidge. Just a smidge. You can see the gain reduction. Right here, you can see the gain reduction here. It's like 1.5 dB. You know, it's always gonna correspond right here too. And then I'm just gonna kind of move the frequency. I like that. Yeah, so just just subtleness. So I used a um, the high pass here on the the hi hats, and then I just dipped down a little bit uh, around the three point you know seventeen kilohertz. You can see it right there. And all I've done here to get my drum sound is you use subtractive EQ and. What I'm trying to, you know, show you here is that, you know, a lot of people think that using an EQ is all about boosting, and it's not always the case. I'm giving you an example of subtractive EQing, and it's extremely powerful. We can sit here and listen to this. Now with the hi-hats, uh, maybe we'll do this. The hi-hats. I hear a little delay in there. I like that. So I can go right here, edit the, um, click the edit, and I'm editing the aux send. And maybe I'll just bring that down one and pan it a little to the right. Okay. And then we can just get a little level here. It's not bad. We got uh, we have a little uh, compression on our kick and our, our snare. And what I'll do is I'll grab the three of these, just like that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to route to an output bus. So this is going to be my final uh, my final uh, level here, which can control the whole the whole kit, and maybe on that one, I can add a little uh, reverb, you know, a little smidge of reverb, and uh, let's try uh, the old uh, SSL compressor. You just ratio all the way up and release and just kind of dial in your threshold, how much you want to compress it or not. And it really helps it, I don't know, it, it gives it a certain power. <laughs> I love it. So that, now we can just dial down our, our you know, we're, we're staying right, you know, in the between the eight and the four, right around six. Turn it up a bit. Maybe turn down the, the EQ a bit. So now we have a, a nice drum kit sound. We have, you know, the Kongs routed out to, separately to the SSL channels. And now we can start writing a song right around this drum beat. And of course, as you go, you know, your song develops, you might want to change the EQ of the kick or the snare or the hi-hat. But you started off with a, with a, you know, making a killer drum kit sound. 
and the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat are not bleeding into the each other's frequencies because we use the low pass and the high pass filters to cut out those frequencies, you know, you know. The kick isn't bleeding too much into the into the highs. We got rid of the that that kick sound, the you know the pedal sound, the sn the snare. We use the band pass to cut out the lows and a little bit of the highs. And the um, oh sorry. In the hi hat, we just kind of we cut out all the highs and we just notched out a little frequency in there, you know. I did it for taste. That could change as more, you know, more tracks come in. So, you know, let's 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 A and B the sounds. Let's. So this is the the kit we started off with. And you can see we haven't done any, uh, you know, nothing controlled with our levels. We're peaking. But this is what I started off with, and I've even got this down this uh, the level down 6 dB. So let's. Check out the, the, the levels, how they, I've got more tracks going here, more channels, and my levels are all nice. It's all part of the whole, it's all, everything is all put together. You know, your gain structure, your EQing, and compression. It's all tightly woven together, and you have to use all of them in conjunction when you need them or when you don't need them to get yourself a good sound. But you need to know how to use them all. And we're going to keep doing more videos on this and delving in deeper into EQ and using them it, it, and using the EQ in different circumstances. Because, you know, EQing is the hardest thing to get your head wrapped around when mixing. And we're going to, I'm going to help you get your head wrapped around it. And we're going to do more videos on the EQ section here going forward. I really hope this video was a help to you in some way and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video and please be social on our YouTube, our Facebook, our Twitter and Google Plus sites and don't forget our LearnReason.com site where everything, all the videos are easy to find and uh, the community is growing. So take care everybody.